I'm London, aka History of the Batman, where across the universe I relive the defining moments of the DC character Batman and his long 80 plus year history. I am proud to say that I am an official DC ambassador for the character Batman, courtesy of Warner Brothers and DC. As a DC ambassador, I not only get to celebrate the wonderful Batman fandom, but I also get early and exclusive access to amazing DC merchandise, apparel, and collectibles. I get to share it with you got the mic. Usually on History of the Batman, I discuss amazing Batman stories from comics and all other visual media. So if you are watching, you're probably a fan of Batman comics. I hope. <laughs> and as you start to collect more and more comics, you know that you need a very cool place to house them to make sure that they don't get damaged and they stay safe. Which is why many comic book collectors use long and short boxes to house their comics. But if you want to make boxes that house your wonderful comics more custom and more batastic, for this DIY video I wanted to show you guys how to make your own custom Batman comic book long boxes. Out of shoe boxes. Now, when you buy a new pair of shoes, if you're like me, I don't use the box it comes in. <laughs> Usually I put my shoes in my closet directly and the box just kind of stays in my closet on the floor and I do nothing with it. And I might be too lazy and forget to just throw it away and recycle it. <laughs> a great way to use these boxes and not have them just collect dust in your closet is to turn them into a place to hold some of your most favorite comics. So to create your own custom comic book box out of a shoe box, all you really need are four essential items. A shoe box of your choice that you are not using. A glue stick such as this one. Try to stay away from the Elmer's glue liquid because it'll probably bleed through what we're covering our lovely new <laughs> comic book boxes in. A pair of scissors. And our fourth item is one of your favorite Batman comics that you aren't afraid to just make your own piece of art with. <laughs> For this comic book box that we're making today, I am using the 2014 copy of Batman Detective Comics 27, which celebrated the 75th anniversary of the debut of The Batman. The reason why I am using this very special book that is actually a variant cover that features Frank Miller's original artwork of Catwoman. I am using this because I literally have multiple copies of this exact book. So I don't feel bad going through these pages, cutting out the comic pages that we want and gluing them on this box to create a whole new shoe box. I also have the regular cover for Detective Comics 47 with Greg Capullo on it. So I have multiple copies of this one. I would say do not tear up a comic if you only have one of them and it is your all time favorite to read. That should go inside <laughs> of your box. Get a comic that either you don't mind buying another copy of or you already have multiple copies of the same comic. You probably already like the artwork in it which is why you have the comic so it shouldn't be bad. Since we are doing a Batman theme today because we're Batman out here, getting a Batman comic that you enjoy is essential. Since we have everything, I say we start with the top and see what panels we're going to put on the very top of our box. I like this page. Do not. That is by Brian Hitch, I believe. Let's cut this out and paste it on our top just to start getting a collage going. I kind of want to make a collage. I don't want to just put whole pages on the boxes. I want to mix it up a little bit. You should have fun with it. It's your box. Here is the page out of the comic. I think I'm going to make it a piece that goes directly right here. The edges are kind of jagged. I'm just going to fold it on the other side and then just overlay it with another comic book cover. So when the final product is here, it all looks seamless and neat. <laughs> I'm just not a, a good scissor cutter. Missed that part in preschool, so. Now when you've got your cover, you just get your glue stick and just coat the back of this as best as you can because you don't want it to peel off. You want it to all stay seamless. Wow, I haven't used a glue stick 
in a minute. <laughs> Ideas for your comic book boxes. Now, if you just want to do Batman, that's totally fine. Maybe you want to do it by era, or maybe you want to do it by creator. However you want to celebrate your favorite piece a Batman comics and put them in your bone box, I say do it. Or maybe your decision is to use another character, such as the Joker, who is celebrating his 80th anniversary this year. I'm gonna take this logo out and put it somewhere on the front. <laughs> maybe you're a fan of the Joker and you want to collect single issues of some amazing Joker stories in your custom long box. Of course, there are tons of Joker stories that would go great with celebrating his 80th anniversary. First of all, if you have the Joker 80th anniversary 100 page super spectacular comic that recently came out, definitely put that in the box. If you have a copy of Batman the Killing Joke, definitely put that in there. Iconic Alan Moore and Brian Boland story and if you are a fan of the Clown Prince of Crime, it is a necessity to read. There's also single issues from Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's modern saga, Death of the Family, which of course pays homage to the other amazing and heartbreaking Joker story within Batman and Death of the Family. Look, my detective comics is on this cover. You probably will not see the whole progress I'm doing, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> There's also other fantastic Joker stories, particularly from the 1990s, from Marv Wolfman's single issues of Batman 450 to 451 I believe which is an amazing Joker story and shows the aftermath of Commissioner Gordon dealing with what Joker did to not only Barbara Gordon in The Killing Joke but also what Batman has to deal with with Jason Todd's death from Death in the Family. And also one of my other favorite 90s Joker stories is a Legends of the Dark Knight series that is called Going Sane. I am trying to do my best to get this all on here. <laughs> If we focus on the Batman cell, there are so many arcs that you can collect. These kind of boxes are more so for single issues, but they should be the ones dearest to your heart. <laughs> if you are a fan of Batman in the Bronze Age of DC, which is the 1970s, maybe you have really good work by Neil Adams or even the late but forever great Denny O'Neill. In particular, his Head of the Demon series with Ra's al Ghul and Talia al Ghul, which is some of my favorite Batman stories of all time. In particular, if you have Batman issue 232, which introduces Ra's al Ghul, and one of my personal favorites, Batman 244, which has the epic fight in Denny O'Neill's story, The Demon Lives Again, you gotta love a shirtless Batman and Roz just duking it out in the desert with some swords. Like, how can you not love that story? <laughs> Do I love this? Paying homage to Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen's panel from The Dark Knight Returns. We love to see it. Also, just to make it easier, unless I'm cutting out specific panels, kind of like this Detective Comics one in the center, you can just tear these bad boys out. Just be very careful so you don't tear out the entire page because I know my clumsy self would probably do that. <laughs> or if you are a fan of the 1970s and you have any of the issues within Steve Englehart, Marshall Rogers, Terry Austin, Lynn Wing, Walt Simonson, all these amazing creators within the now series dubbed Batman Strange Apparitions, which not only introduces characters such as the love interest of Silver Saint Cloud, but also has amazing stories such as The Laughing Fish. Definitely gotta have this panel right here. <laughs> Maybe your favorite comics are within the 1980s, which was such an important era for the visual evolution of the Batman, not just in comics, but also in film and in television. There are so many amazing single issues that you can collect with the Batman in the 1980s. One that's a really good three issue limited series is by Lynn Wein and it is called The Untold Legend of the Batman. It not only provides a cool original story, but it also gives you a Cliff Snows version of the Batman mythology from the character's debut in 1939 up until 1980. There's also another great story in Batman issue 348, I believe, and it's called Shadow Play. And I really love that issue because it shows Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson, and Alfred Pennyworth moving back into Wayne Manor after living in the Wayne Foundation penthouse for so long, especially after Dick Grayson went off to Hudson University for college. And the fact that they're trying to move in the giant penny and other trophies within the hall of trophies in the Batcave, I love it. <laughs> it seems like such a mundane 
event such as having to move into a house and then having the extraordinary pieces like a huge giant penny or a T-Rex. I love the Batman mythology. <laughs> this indeed is not like a five minute craft. I just want to let you know. See, I finished all of the top. I think it's kind of cool. So now I'm just going to do the sides and then I am picking out panels that I want to put in this top flap. I would say if you're making your own personalized comic book long box, you put the panels and the art that you love the most, especially right here. I already know. <laughs> I want to put this Kelly Jones pinup for sure in the top flap because Kelly Jones, me personally, is my favorite Batman artist. He is my favorite artist that creates The Dark Knight. Now I want to do this back side since the other corners are relatively easy, but let's fill that out. Let's see, what were we talking about? Oh, 80s comics, that's right. <laughs> there is the very underrated four issue arc by Jim Starlin. That is called Batman the Cult. I'm cutting out these single panels because I just love this page so much. <laughs> There's also the classics, such as Frank Miller's Batman The Dark Knight Returns. You can collect those four issues. Also the same with Starlin's Batman A Death in the Family. Ooh, or if you're a Babs fan, you can also collect the late 1980s, early 1990s run of Suicide Squad by John Ostrander. And that is where Barbara Gordon did use her persona of Oracle. If you are a Scarecrow fan, Detective Comics 571's Fear for Sale story, so good. Or if you're a Penguin fan, there is a story called Pieces of Penguin in Batman 374. That is a dope story about the good old Oswald Cobblepot. 1980s is also an amazing era because it began the imprint of Elseworlds. While there are already DC imaginary stories ever since the 1940s, Elseworlds became prominent within DC to share fantastical worlds and alternate universes starring our favorite classic characters, including the Batman who, especially over the next 20 years or so, proved to be the master of the multiverse when it came to starring in his own Elseworlds. I'm so far enjoying how this is coming out. The first official Elseworlds of DC Comics is Batman Gotham by Gaslight, which came out in 1989. See, I have my copy right here, and that is definitely going into my personalized Batman box when I am done, so I'm quite excited about that. It is one of my favorite stories and probably my favorite Elseworlds. That will be right here. Gotta add that. Speaking of Batmobile, I recently, like yesterday recently, watched 1989 Batman. And that Batmobile is just forever sick. But maybe, just maybe, if you are a fan of Tim Burton's 1989 blockbuster film Batman, maybe you have the comic book adaptation of Batman 1989 and maybe all of the other films within the Tim Burton, Joel Schumacher Batman film universe. Those would be really cool to add into your special Batman made box. What's also cool is that if you have all of the comic book adaptations from Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin, they were all written by the late but forever great Denny O'Neill. Shoot, you could do an entire box just dedicated to Denny O'Neill's work on Batman if you wanted. That's how much he contributed to this character's mythology. Now, if you're a 90s baby, like myself. Maybe that is where your love for Batman comics came in and some of your favorite stories are from that decade. The early 1990s had amazing stories surrounded by Tim Drake who would slowly but surely become the third Robin the Boy Wonder after the death of Jason Todd. But of course the story that got me into loving Batman comics of course was the 1993 series Batman Nightfall. That is a very fun series to collect especially in single issues. Maybe you have the climax issue of Batman 497 which is the broken back which is when the villain Bane breaks Bruce Wayne aka Batman's back and he has to be out as the Dark Knight for a period of time to heal. Maybe you were a fan of Batman the Animated Series and collected the Batman Adventures tie-in comics which are amazing. And of course even the current series Batman the Adventures Continue, you could have that into a whole DCAU themed comic box. All right, so I did the front and the side 
of the box. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, see, that came out. I am going to disappear for a second, but when I return, all of these sides will be covered and then we will wrap it up by putting some really cool panels within the box. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Ta-da, I'm back. Took a little bit longer than I expected. Now I totally expect this to take a long time. Here is the outside of the box. Here's the top. Here are the sides with different panels from still just using Detective Comics 27 from 2014. But I like it. Oh, and I like the fact that I put <laughs> the cover on the side so literally now the book is just... <laughs> it's a little bit uh, picked over. Now I think the last thing we should do is just decorate the inside. So I'm going to be putting this Graham Nolan poster on the top, and also the Kelly Jones art that I showed you earlier. As I attempt <laughs> to glue this, where were we with comics you can put in? Oh, 1990s. There are, of course, not just single issue stories, but long series where you can slowly but surely collect these single issues within them, such as 1999's No Man's Land, now granted, that has about like 200 stories <laughs> within that series. So maybe trade paperback that one. One that I do think would be really cool is Batman the Long Halloween. If you want to collect that 13 issue series, that's definitely, definitely good. You can also collect Elseworld stories from the 1990s that feature Batman. Of course, my favorite is the Vampire Batman series by Doug Mench and Kelly Jones because Kelly Jones is my favorite Batman artist. And there's so many, I mean, even moving into the 2000s. You can collect arcs such as Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee's Batman Hush. You can collect the stellar series Bruce Wayne, Murder, and Fugitive. So good. There are several single issues within Grant Morrison's long run on the Batman publication, especially stories within the Batman R.I.P. arc. Uh, Batman of Zerna is literally one of my favorite interpretations of Batman, especially since they revamped it from the Golden Age persona. I love it, love, love it. Or if you're a Dick Grayson fan and you just want to decorate this whole box with Nightwing pictures, <laughs> or even Dick Grayson's Batman, because for a few years after Bruce Wayne apparently died by the hand of Darkseid in Final Crisis, Dick Grayson became Batman and took up the mantle. And those stories are amazing. I particularly love Batman Gates of Gotham, and I also love Batman the Black Mirror. Those are really two great Dick Grayson Batman stories. I think I'm gonna use this jock up to be the center of my opening cover. What are other awesome stories? Commissioner Gordon, who I totally think is in the Batman family, if you want to read a really good limited series about Gordon and really the people within the GCPD, I definitely recommend Gotham Central. That is a fantastic series. I had to cut him a little bit, but we're, we're cool. We're going. Remember, if you see any edges or anything that isn't reinforced, just get that glue stick and clamp that down. I think I'm just going to finish the top of this. And of course, there is just a plethora <laughs> of single issues and amazing story arcs that you can collect if you're making your own Batman long box but in the New 52 and even DC Rebirth. From pretty much anything <laughs> of Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's run on the Batman title. You can collect the long series Batman Eternal, which literally features everybody within the Batman family. You can add in newer Batman titles, especially from Tom King's run and currently James Tinney and the Fourth's run. I personally love City of Bane. I thought it was a perfect conclusion to Tom King's very in-depth run of looking at not just Batman, but also the character of Bruce Wayne. I absolutely love that every time. Okay, I did the inside cover. That is what it looks like. I used the Detective Comics 27 at the top. I also did that on the very top of this box. And I think if you would like, you can totally decorate within this part of the box. But I think I'm just going to put in some comics that I want to add into my 
custom Batman box. Sure, is it time consuming? A little bit. But I think if you wanted to utilize things like shoe boxes that are just gonna be sitting in your closet anyway, doing stuff like this is very fun. I absolutely love it and I know that whatever comics are in this particular box, it is all about the Batman. And it doesn't have to be just a Batman character. You can pick any character within the DC multiverse that you want to highlight and put in your favorite comics and boom, you can make your own personalized cool Batman comic book box. So I can put in books such as my non-cut up uh, Detective Comics 27 anniversary issue. I can put in other anniversary issues such as this Detective Comics issue a thousand. And I can put in other things such as my Gotham by Gaslight. I can put in my Batman year one. I can put in other crossovers like Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I absolutely love that series. All of the series are amazing. I love my Batman 66 series. I have many of these single issues, so I can put these in this box. Or I can break out the classics, some of my favorite stories with Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon because I ship them wholeheartedly. Or a gem such as this, which is Batman Annual 25, which tells the resurrection story of Jason Todd, who returns to the Batman mythos as the new Red Hood. And I can put in books such as this really fun Batman issue 50, which has a special Jim Lee variant cover, which is one of my favorite covers that came out for that celebratory time when the bat and the cat were supposed to get married. <laughs> See, I can put these comics in and so much more within this box. Thank you guys so much for watching this DIY. I personally love my new custom Batman long box. I hope at home you can create some amazing comic book long boxes yourself and house your favorite books you love to read. Thank you guys for watching. I'm London aka History of the Batman and I will see you guys on the interwebs. Remember it's all about peace, love, and Batman. Bye! What? <laughs>